Hi, welcome to Interval Zero. We're here today to review the samples that come along with the RTX 64 product. Um, RTX 64 SDK includes um, 19 sam samples. They, uh, they come with full source code, Visual Studio project files. Um, you can be up and running with one in a matter of a minute. Um, and the, uh, these, these samples are delivered as a good reference for you to, to show the API set that's included with RTX 64 and to give you a good quick start for your application. So you can use one sample, uh, might get you through what your application is to do. You might you, you know, need two or three put together into your application um, to get you up and running quickly. The samples that we're going to cover today, um, they kind of fall into a few categories. Um, the first one is communicating with Windows. Uh, the, you know, when you have a real-time process, it's going to probably need to pass data to a non-real-time process, either for a GUI or a database, and it may have to go two ways. So we have two samples. The Windows RTX 64 uh, using SDL uh, it demonstrates that, as well as the RTK IPC. And the RTK is actually a, a kernel program, a Windows kernel program, uh, 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 talking and signaling a real-time process. Um, the next category is, uh, is communicating with devices. So, you know, quite often um, our customers will have to, you know, uh, use a PCI card, a PCI Express card, and as soon as you do that, then you have to go out and figure out uh, where that board is and, and what memory addresses you need to talk, talk to. We have uh, 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 two samples that actually cover that. We'll, we'll, talk, we'll show scan bus. Um, and then once you get further along in your application, typically you want to see how it performs. See what kind of latencies your timers have, see what kind of uh, determinism uh, your processes have. So we'll, we'll review the SRTM sample. And the last one is the Ethernet Layer 2 filter drivers. Uh, RTX 64 has a, a full um, uh, TCP IP stack and uh, several um, Ethernet drivers, uh, NIC drivers. So in between those two, you can install this RT Ether filter, Ethernet filter. Um, that will allow you to uh, uh, filter, which means you can uh, drop or let pass or, or modify um, layer 2 Ethernet uh, packets. The first sample we can take a look at is the Windows RTX 64 using STL. We created this sample for, for two reasons. One was to show you know, how to use uh, the C++ standard template libraries. And the second was to show how to share data between two processes. And the two processes uh, we, we were showing, uh, one runs in, uh, in Windows, and we call it the, the winproducer.exe, and the other runs in our real-time subsystem, and it's the rtconsumer.rtss. Um, so to share data, we, we need to also um, signal each other to say when we've consumed that data or when there's new data. So with that, we actually um, uh, use rtpulse event as our IPC mechanism, and, uh, and when, when one uh, of the processes gets um, a notification, uh, he can then, uh, the RT wait for single objects notified, he moves on to do what he should do, which is in the producer side to give more data. He copies that data to the shared memory area. It's a single area in memory that both uh, processes can look at. And then when the consumer um, uh, gets it, he can uh, signal the producer saying, okay, I've consumed that data, uh, you can send more. So they can ping pong back and forth like that and, and pass data. The next sample is the RTK IPC. This one does uh, a lot the same as uh, the previous sample which to, to demonstrate sharing uh, uh, data uh, between two processes. But in here, the, the, the Windows process is actually a kernel driver. The RTK IPCD uh, IPC driver that sys runs in, in the Windows kernel space and it appears to Windows as a, as a normal Windows driver. Um, and the, uh, the, the real-time process is the RTK RTSS app, uh, and they're, they're passing uh, uh, data back and forth, just like the previous example, um, but they need to do a bit more to do that because it's a kernel driver. So um, the first API is the RTK uh, RTSS attach um, and, uh, and detach function, and, and that w is required because the, the one process is running in the Windows kernel. Um, and in this, we, uh, we, in this example, we show some of the other methods um, of, of IPC mechanisms. One are the mutexes to protect the memory and the um, and semaphores to do the signaling. Um, so in, in much the same way they, they both use a wait for single object and they can use um, semaphores or events for um, to do the signaling. And the next sample um, is the um, SS the SRTM sample um, and, and that's the system uh, response time uh, measurement sample. 
And basically, it's a, it's a, we call it a, you know, a, a, an RTAPI, so it's a real-time API, timer latency uh, measurement tool. So it, with, this, with this sample, you can take the code, because you get the full source code, and you can modify it and put it into your own um, application. And what it'll give you is you'll be able to determine how fast uh, your system's running, or what kind of latencies you're getting uh, when the system's under load. So you can, uh, you can try and load up the system, either, uh, uh, either um, I.O., uh, you know, accessing hardware, or just uh, Windows processing. And, and you, you probably do both and see how your system responds. And you can do that with just with the sample. So you can run the sample, stress the system, and, and demonstrate what kind of latencies you'll see with RTX on your hardware. The APIs that are uh, referenced are you know, creating timers, because that's the context switch, and running those timers. Uh, you enable port I.O. so that you can read and write um, actually to, um, to the legacy uh, Windows um, I.O. ports. And that's in there so that you can actually um, uh, enable the system timer and actually hear the, uh, you know, any differences in, uh, in or, or, you know, excessive latencies will actually, you'll be able to hear them because it, it, by default it sets um, a one kilohertz uh, timer, uh, which translates into, um, you know, the, the, the half that for the frequency you're here, and then any latency will appear as clicks. So you can actually, you know, hear it uh, without just relying on the uh, histogram that it, that it ends up with. And this one, we can actually uh, take a step-by-step -step look at, you know, how to, uh, how to, you know, w build it, use it, and see the results. Here is the uh, the directory that uh, the samples come in. So the SDK normally installs under the program files directory, interval zero, RTX SDK, the current 1.1 uh, directory, and then the samples, and then under samples are all the all of our samples, the 19 of them, and um, this one uh, is the SRTM, and and you can see that we have um, uh, Visual Studio 2010 and 2012 um, uh, project files and solution files, but uh, right now I'm, I'm using the 2010 solution file, so I just, I open him up, and I, you know, I can see my, um, my project here. So uh, it, it'll build, uh, you know, right out of the gate. We, we should see that. Uh, it's the SRTM project, and you can build it two ways. So you can build it as an RTSS debugger release, and that means it's going to be a real-time um, uh, application, or you can build it as a Windows application debugger release, and, and we'll show uh, the results of both of those. So, as a, as, a, you, as you can imagine, the Windows uh, uh, re, you know build should show higher latencies. Um, so when we build these, um, they fall into uh, the directory underneath those projects, and um, you can see the two directories that are built for you know the two different types. It's um, uh, the Windows Debug and the, the RTX, uh, RTSS um, program. And then once we run this, um, this application, uh, it's going to um, output to the RTX server console window. Uh, you know, normally a command line would, would um, a non-real-time command line would output to uh, your console window, your command window, but your, RT, your real-time processes um, output printfs and um, to what we call the RTX server console. So you can see the results of this. This ran for 15 seconds uh, on a 100 microsecond timer period. And you can see that um, a majority of those, 130,000 out of 150,000 context switches, uh, were under a microsecond in latency. Um, so that's, that's pretty good results. Um, this was on my laptop, so at first I wasn't sure how it was going to run, but it, it ran pretty good. Uh, the worst case was, um, was under four microseconds latency. We had, we had one occurrence of that in a context switch across that 15 seconds. So now if we run the same, uh, uh, the Windows version of it, we can see that's in the debug directory. There's the, the .exe file. Uh, we, we run him and he outputs to the, to the command window. And it, it, you know, it, it, it output a larger histogram because there was a, a greater variance um, in, uh, in context with, in latencies for the context switch. And you can see, at best, um, uh, uh, Windows had uh, the fastest it could do uh, a context switch was more than, uh, took more than 29 uh, microseconds. The worst case was um, above 264 microseconds. And that's at, without Windows under load. So if you put Windows under load, you would expect to see um, higher numbers. Uh, if you put just Windows under load with the RTX version, the real-time version, you would not expect to see a higher, uh, a higher latency because the windows won't preempt the, the real-time subsystem. The next sample 
is um, is the scan bus example. So, so this is a, a good example because because most of our customers will will want to talk to a PCI Express board or some type of hardware, um, and to do that, those boards are, are um, plug and play. You'll need to go through and and scan uh, the PCI bus, and um, and find out which board is yours. So this is this will this uses the API RT get bus data by offset, and I'll explain what that is uh, in the, in the next few slides because uh, we'll step through this one as well. And um, uh, once we do that, the, the scan bus doesn't show exactly how to attach to it. So th there's another sample called the Intel Pro E 1000, which we won't go through because it's a bit more complicated. But in that example, you you can see the RT attach interrupt and the RT map memory call. Uh, that you would use uh, with uh, data you'll get back from uh, the scan bus. So um, this is uh, so the the only API re reference that's that's truly notable in the scan bus is the RT get this get bus data by offset. Um, and stepping through this, um, I, I brought you right into uh, the Dev Studio directory, and you can build this one for debugging uh, for for Windows and and RTX as well. Um, it, it doesn't really matter since it's not doing any real-time processing. It's just scanning the PCI bus. Um, and so when we run it, it, I ran the one that the, the RTSS version, which outputs to the RTX um, uh, server window. And it, it actually, you know, it actually um, pumped out a lot of information. So this, this scrolled quite a bit. And I, I, I scrolled it back up to find uh, a device that was uh, interesting. So this was how it, the, the get, get bus data by offset uh, goes through it. It goes through the bus number, device number, and function number, and goes through every one that's possible to find uh, a matching, uh, a, a one that the device exists. And then two, what you would do is find a matching device. You would use your vendor ID and your device ID, which would be unique for your particular card. Um, the, the vendor here is 8086, that's Intel. And the device ID is the one E3A. I believe that's uh, uh, an Intel NIC. Uh, um, so once once we know what our device is, we find that. Uh, we then look at its base address. So we, we can get this base address. That's a physical address. Map to map that to our virtual address space, and now we can talk to the board, the registers on the board. And then we also need to know the interrupt line. So we can use this value here uh, to call the RT attach interrupt and actually and actually respond to interrupts from this board. Um, so th this, this example will get you up and running quite quickly in talking to a PCI board. This is our final sample we want to review. It's the RT Ethernet filter. Um, the, with RTX uh, and the, and the TCP/IP stack that's supplied with RTX 64, you can um, insert a filter driver in between the, uh, the TCP/IP stack and the NIC driver. And in this sample, um, I'm using the RT IGB uh, NIC driver, which is supplied with RTX 64. And um, uh, and we've we'll, the sample will actually uh, insert itself in between the stack and that NIC driver. So in this way, we'll, we the, the the sample gets called when there's a packet transmit, transmitted or received. Um, and in that way, we get a pointer to the frame, and we can inspect the packet. We can modify the packet. Um, we can also um, inject packets or drop packets, um, both in the transmit and receive direction. Uh, to do this. Um, uh, we get called when there's a, when the when the stack is is uh, transmitting a packet, and it calls the RTN the uh, transmit filter. Uh, we get passed a pointer to the to the frame, and then uh, on our return from that, we can instruct the stack to either um, to drop it, to not send it to the NIC, or to pass it along to the NIC. Um, this and the same goes for the receive uh, RTN the receive filter call, and we can also. Um, inject a packet. So we, we can allocate a frame, build it, build it up ourselves, and it's a layer two packet, so we have to build up the MAC address and the ether type. And then we would call the RTND transmit call, and that would send it directly out the NIC. Uh, things, uh, packets we would want to queue, uh, we want to inject on the receive path, we would call the RTND queue receive frame. Um, so this is great for, um, uh, it's a great example for doing layer two communication. Uh, it's, it's similar to the Linux raw sockets, um, and it's you would use this for something like like building uh, an EtherCAT master. So you could go out and talk uh, layer two communication. So any of the applications or any of the protocols that are that are fully uh, layer two communications, uh, this is an ex ex excellent example to show you how to to, uh, to uh, build an application to do that.
So there you have it. There's five of the 19 samples. Um, I encourage you to, to go look at the, the remaining samples. Um, they're documented in the RTX uh, 64 um, help file and as well as online. So you can just go online and, uh, and look at the sample set and, and read the, the brief overviews that's covered in the documentation. Uh, you might find something that's more unique to your application than the five we've covered here. And again, I encourage you to, uh, to go through them and, and try them. If, you, if you're new to RTX and you want to jumpstart your application development, you know, try the samples first. They may not be an exact match, but we found that the, the customer, our new customers that have used the samples to get going ha have moved a lot faster. We've, we've, uh, we've, we've had customers that didn't truly know that the, some of the samples existed, and so that's why we did this video. And so uh, hopefully this, uh, this gets your application up and running faster. And once again, thanks for watching.